Are you ready to start your own dropshipping business, but you don't know where to start? I've made it my mission to create the most beginner-friendly how to start dropshipping video on YouTube. Whether you're a complete beginner or have some experience under your belt, this video will provide you with the knowledge and the resources that you need to start your own Shopify dropshipping store. If you don't know me, my name is Hassan, and I've done multiple seven figures on Shopify using the dropshipping model. I've done it in multiple different niches across multiple different brands. From finding the right products and suppliers to setting up your website, I've got you covered. By the end of this video, my goal is for you to start your own Shopify dropshipping store. Store. Your first step will be to create your own online store. Now, I personally believe that Shopify is the best platform to host your dropshipping store on. Not only are they extremely beginner friendly, they also have a ton of great apps that integrate seamlessly with your store. If you haven't already signed up for Shopify, then make sure to use the link in my description to get Shopify for $1 a month for the first three months. Now, once you click the link in my description, it's going to bring you to a page like this. And all you want to do is start by typing in your email. So I'll just type in a random email for now. And then you'll click on start free trial. Now, it's just going to ask you a few questions. So which of these describes you best you'll just select i'm just starting you'll click next where would you like to sell you'll just select online store because we're going to be doing it on our website and then it's going to ask you do you want to sell products through drop shipping i would personally put no here i just think that they keep a high watch on accounts that do select yes because i believe they don't like people drop shipping too much just because with all of the horror stories of customers never getting their orders and those kind of things now it's going to ask you do you have an audience or a following if you do just click yes i'm just going to click no for now and then here you're just going to select what you would like to name your store so this doesn't really matter this is just going to be for your reference and how to log into your store so this can really be anything here and then you click on next and then you'll just select the country where your business is going to be located but so this is not where you're living this is where your business will be located so wherever you plan on registering your business that's what you would select here then you click on next and then you'll just log in using your email and password and if you don't already have a shopify account then you'll just make a new account and then you'll be all logged in congratulations you've just now opened your first shopify store and you're officially ahead of most people believe it or not once you have your shopify store created you're going to be coming into a page that looks like this and the first thing we're going to want to do is actually add a theme to our store so a theme is essentially the layout of your store and how it's going to look so you can see right now i currently have the dawn theme installed but that's not the theme that you do have to choose if you come here and click on online store and then themes it's going to bring you to a page like this and it'll show you a different bunch of themes that you can choose from so i'll just click on the visit theme store here now once you're on this page they have a tremendous amount of themes that you can choose from free and paid as a beginner i don't think you do need a paid version or a paid theme so i would highly recommend just selecting the free button here and now it'll show you i personally like all of these themes however if you are a beginner i would recommend going with something that's a bit more general and not too specific so you'll see some of these themes are targeted towards specific niches or specific types of products so i would personally either recommend the refresh theme or the dawn theme so to install those on your store you'll just click on them or click on the theme that you like and then you click on try theme and then you just click add theme and it's going to be adding it to your online store now you'll see that i added the theme right over here if you want to publish it all you have to do is just click on publish now i already have the dot theme installed and published so i won't do this but in your case that's what you would do now that you've created a store it's time to pick a product or a niche if you're a beginner i wouldn't be too restrictive here and you should be open to selling anything as long as it's legal i'll now be showing you guys one of my favorite product research methods but before i do i always pre-qualify any product while searching by asking myself the following five questions can it be sold for more than thirty dollars is the product easy to understand does the product cost less than thirty percent of the selling price is it easy to create content and ads for and last but not least does it solve a problem these are questions i ask myself on the fly as i'm looking through products just to quickly eliminate any product that doesn't meet any of these criteria so now let's jump into my computer and i'll show you guys exactly how i research products to potentially sell on my drop shipping store the first thing you want to do is start by going to app.menea.com i'll have a link in my description with 50 percent off if you guys are interested in trying out Minea. It's actually one of my favorite platforms to research and get inspired for potential winning dropshipping products. Once you're in the platform, come over here and select Facebook ads from the left hand section of the menu. And then I always like to click the advanced toggle here. And as you can see, they have so many filters, which is why I actually love Minea. You can filter by the scene day, the first scene, the last scene, the creation day, the country, the e-com platform, how many shares, comments, likes, all these kind of things that you can use to your advantage to try to find potential winning products. So I'll just start by playing around with some of the filters just to show you guys exactly how powerful this can be. One thing I like to do personally is I like to go to the creation date and I like to go the last 30 days just to see some of the most recent ads. This is basically going to show me all the ads that have been created in the last 30 days. So that's one filter I like to use. Another filter I like to use is to go to e-com platform and I like to select Shopify as Shopify is one of the most popular uh, e-commerce platforms out there. And then for countries, I 
typically choose the United States and Canada. I live in Canada and uh, the United States is obviously the biggest economy in the world. And so most people are running ads to the United States. So it's a great place to get inspired for potential products. And then another thing I like to use actually is the call to action here. I like to put shop now. This ensures that most of the ads that we get shown are actually products and not services or anything like that. And then another thing I like to add as well is the likes. I'll actually do something smaller here, like about 100, actually 200 likes. And the reason why is I'm essentially trying to look for products products that are still untapped products that still are you know basically just showing signs of potential success and potential scalability I don't want something that's already been scaled and already been milked basically I'm looking for something that has that potential and I can take and improve and take advantage of so I'll set the likes at about 200 and then the shares is another great one once a product is doing well all of my winners I've drop shipped in the past shares they always have a lot of shares so if an ad has shares it means that it's more most likely doing well. I'll keep this at 100 because there's usually a lot less shares than they're all likes. And then the comments as well, I'll put this at about 50 comments because also comments are difficult to come by. And so that's why I put the likes as the highest and then followed by shares and comments. And then here you can choose by media type like images and videos. I'll keep this empty for now just to see, you know, just to get a whole bunch of different variety. And then you can also choose to get ads that are targeted either to males or females, but I'll leave this as, as is for now. You kind of just start scrolling down here trying to pick up and ask yourself those five questions that I mentioned earlier. Can this product be sold for more than $50? Does it solve a problem? Can I easily create content around this? These are the questions you want to be asking yourself. And I just try to look for things that catch my eye. You do get better over time with this. At the beginning, you might select a wrong product or pick a wrong product. And that's totally normal. It's very difficult to pick a great product from your first try. Product research is something that takes a lot of time to develop. And you'll start to understand what makes a good product as you start picking a product, testing it out, uh, noticing that it's not working, and then you'll realize, and then you'll understand why it did or it didn't work. So I'll kind of go through here and kind of go through my thought process as I go through this. Anything clothing, I like to stay away from, mainly because clothing usually means you're going to have a lot of SKUs, a lot of different sizes, a lot of different colors, and it's just a headache that you don't need as a beginner. This looks like a pretty cool product. So I'm sure you guys have seen this type of product before where you can charge a whole bunch of different, like essentially your phone, your watch, your AirPods as well see this is a product that solves a problem it basically allows you to charge all of your devices at once together in one spot without having to use a bunch of cables and potentially get your stuff mixed up and lost so this is a great product but unfortunately i do believe this is a product that's already been scaled and milked although if you know with the right marketing i'm sure it can still be sold it's just it's probably going to take a lot more effort and branding and marketing to try to get this product sold it's been going around for years beauty is also a good niche to go into you just have to be careful with anything that goes on the body or in the body or um, anything like that because you can get sued if someone has some sort of reaction or anything like that so just be careful with those kind of products but yeah essentially you'll just keep going through here jewelry is a great one as well jewelry is great you know it's emotion you can sell it for birthdays for holidays for anniversaries there's a lot of different occasions where you could potentially sell jewelry so jewelry is a great one let's see here let's see what this is again another beauty product again this is a great product Product. it's solving a problem it looks like it's something for eyelashes for women i think it either makes them longer or something like that <laughs> I'm not sure I'm not a girl, but that's what I can see from here. So again, like I said earlier, I'm just going through these. I'm trying to see if they solve a problem, if I can create content for them easily, if they can be sold for more than $50. That's kind of my product research method. This is how you can get inspired quite a bit. You don't necessarily have to copy and I don't recommend just ripping someone's ads or ripping off someone's product completely. I typically use this for inspiration and I'll take what I find here and I'll try to improve upon it, find a better product, find a similar product that solves the same problem, but solves it in a better way. There's just so many ways to think about this, right? But what I'd recommend is just staying away from anything that's illegal, clothing, shoes, things like that, that have a lot of SKUs, I would recommend staying away from. I'd recommend staying away from items that are with glass because they're more prone to breaking. I'd recommend staying from staying away from anything that goes on or in the body, especially as a beginner, because you can get sued if anyone has any sort of allergic reaction. That's what I would be careful with as I scroll through 
through here. But for the purpose of this video, I've actually already picked out a product that I'll be designing the store around. But everything I teach you going forward in this video, you can actually apply with any product or any niche that you decide to choose. So this is the product that I'll be using today as an example that I'll be adding to the store. I'll be showing you guys exactly how to design a homepage, a product page, just overall a website in the pet niche. Just as you guys can see here, this is an example website, obviously someone else that's selling this product. And from first glance, these are the type of websites that most dropshippers have. And unfortunately, this just looks terrible in my opinion. And the reason why is so you have these snowflakes things coming down on the screen. That's just in my opinion, very tacky and it's not really professional. You have these things here that say like hot sale and all these crazy emojis, a bunch of different colors, things like this that don't really help that just look tacky and spammy and just too busy. And there's just too much going on way too many different colors. So you have these random pop ups coming up here from the side. I do like this sticky at the cart here. But overall, and the gifts are okay as well. But overall, the pictures are just too big. There's too much white space here. Overall, it's just not properly optimized for conversion. So my goal right now essentially show you how I can take this product, make a couple changes and turn it from a product page like this to something that looks proper and branded and trustworthy. This is the product we'll be using for today's video. I'm excited to get started. So now that we have our product picked, it's time to come up with a brand name and to choose a logo. I love using Canva. Canva is great. It's easy to use and it's very you know user friendly. So we'll just click here on create a design. I'll do a custom size. I'll do a thousand by 200. I just found that works best for Shopify logos and the way it fits on the Shopify dashboard. This size usually works well. And then since we're going to be in the pet niche, I'm just going to come up with a logo. Let's see here. Puppy, ha puppy house or puppy house. I've been seeing this quite around quite a bit. And then I usually just like to choose any font that looks a little bit different, a little bit cool. Uh, so this one just came up that I've recently used. It's called Coiny. And then what I'll do is I'll just make this a little bit bigger, go like that. That looks good. And just like that, we have a brand name and a logo. As you guys can see, it's very easy. It's very fast. You don't need to overthink this step. You don't need to waste too much time on this. So now that we have our brand name and our logo, it's time to come up with brand colors. So I highly recommend having three colors, a main color, white, a secondary color, black, and an accent color. The accent color can really be anything that you like, as long as it's nothing too crazy. And when I say accent color, just to show you guys a quick example, this would be an accent color. So if you come to Amazon's website, an accent color would be like this you know amazon orange or this you know yellow it's a color that's different from any other color on your website it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb basically and the whole point of an accent color is to draw somebody's attention to that button so in this case the accent colors are here on the at the cart button and the buy now button because this is where amazon wants you to focus your attention on and they want you to click on buy now and add to cart and that's where they're trying to draw your attention to and obviously the reason why is so that you can purchase and amazon makes money and everybody's happy so that's how you should be thinking about brand colors. Quick way to do this is by going to a site called coolers.co. This is a great website where they kind of mix and match colors for you. So if you don't know what color goes with what or what two colors go well together, well, this basically website will do it all for you. They'll usually start with five colors. I'll just remove two of them. And like I said, I like to have black, white, and an accent color. So here they're going to be showing you three random colors that go well together. I usually like to pick one accent color and then one other color to integrate throughout the product page and throughout the home page just to also break all the white space all the black color text as well that's something to keep in mind and you also want to keep in mind your niche so if you're in the pet niche lighter colors fun colors would usually work well so by pressing the space bar it generates a bunch of new colors for you if you for example like one color but not two other colors you could actually click on the lock button here and then it'll lock this color in place and then it'll start showing you two other colors that go well with the main color that you've locked so i'm gonna play around with this for a while come up with a few colors that I like. I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. Okay, so we're back. I've chosen these two colors for the store. So obviously we're gonna have the white as the main color. The black will be for the text. This is most likely going to be the accent color. So for the add to cart and the buy now buttons, this atomic tangerine pink salmon-ish color. I'm actually gonna have this color just throughout the product page and the home page just to add more color on the screen and not make it so boring with the white and black. And these are just two colors that I literally just chose randomly that I just caught my 
eye. I'm not sure how it's gonna look, but we're gonna do our best to make this look really clean and really sharp on the website. Now that we have our colors, it's time to start designing our store. All right, so now it's time to design our store. But before we do, we need to decide if we wanna have a branded store or a general store. Now, there isn't really a right or wrong answer here. I'll kind of just tell you guys what I do and what I prefer, something called niche branded stores. So it's not just one product branded stores. It's more of a niche branded store. So for example, I'll have one store for the pet niche. I'll have one store for kitchen niche, one store for the beauty niche. I just prefer it a lot better that way just because it keeps the website a lot more organized and it's easier to brand. It's really hard to give a website that brand feel when you're just selling a whole bunch of different things that don't really go well together. Like, you know, something in the beauty niche and something in the pen niche don't really go well together. So it's really hard to give your website that premium feel when you're selling multiple different items that shouldn't be going well together. So that's what I do. You can still start with a general store if that's what you like, but I just prefer making sure that all of my stores have a premium look to them and just like a nice vibe to it as well. And just everything making sense. So now that we're gonna start designing our store, the first thing I would do is set up the menus, the policies. I just like to get that out of the way first, just because it just helps, you know, with the flow of the design of the website. The first thing I'll do is actually start selling up my policies. So we'll click on settings, we'll come down and we'll click on policies. The cool thing is that you can actually use Shopify's templates. So for example, the refund policy, privacy policy, terms of service, shipping policy, and the contact information. So you want to make sure you have all of these on your website. They are actually required by law in some countries. I believe all countries, these policies are required by law. So it's really important to get these done. And the cool thing is that Shopify actually saves you a lot of time by just clicking the create from template and it'll create the template for you. What I recommend is just deleting any of your personal information here. So we can just click on this create from template button here and it's just going to pop up a template that we can use. Now, what I recommend doing, however, is just going through this and making sure it applies to your store. So this is for the refund policy. Shopify just spits out a generic 30 day return policy. But if you have a 14 day return policy, then obviously you would change that. And then you just kind of want to go through this and make sure you're giving the customer the instructions on how to actually return the item, what they need to do if they want a return. Do they have to contact you? Do they have to send it to a specific address? So these are all things that you want to make sure that you put in here. And this is all going to be different for everybody. Again, you want to make sure you go through all of this and make sure it's applicable to your store and fits your store and what it needs. So I'll just quickly do this with the other ones. We'll do this with the privacy policy, the terms of service. Now for the shipping policy, it doesn't actually generate one for you because obviously every store is going to be different. It is important to fill this out with shipping information for your customers. You'll be surprised that a lot of customers, this is kind of one of the first pages they'll actually go to because they really want to know how long it's going to take to get their item. So depending on if you're fulfilling from your own warehouse or using AliExpress or using a private agent, this is all going to defer. So for example, if you're shipping to the United States, you could write something like, how does shipping work? You could bold this, underline it just to make it stand out a little bit. And then down here, you could just write, I'll just do one example for shipping to the United States. So I'll write something like, we proudly ship to the United States. We offer two different shipping services as follows. And then you could have here something like ground shipping. And then it's really important to write how many days it's gonna take as well. So you can put in brackets two to five days and then you can put the price. There is a price or if it's free, you'll just write free. And then you could do like another rate like express shipping one to two days. And then if it's free, you'll write free. But if it costs money, then you'll put, you know, whatever amount that it costs. Keep it simple like that, nothing too difficult here. Just make it clear to your customer how long it's going to take to ship and how long it's going to take for them to receive their product. And once we're all done, we'll just click on save. Perfect. So now that we have our policies, it's time to go to the navigation. So the navigation is essentially once you first arrive to a website, it's basically this top section here at the top and the bottom. These are the navigation menus and policies. And these are really important to make sure you have down just to make it really easy for your customers to navigate your store. I've already set them up in a way where it's what I think looks best because you have to remember everybody that comes to your store is kind of looking for something different. Some people want to see your reviews. Some people want to see your best sellers. Some people want to contact you. I like to make sure I have everything in here that a customer could potentially want to know about. For the main menu, I set it up as the accessible 
accessories, our happy customers, FAQ, and get in touch. This is the main menu that'll show up at the top of the website. And to set this up, it's actually extremely easy. So you'll just click on add menu and then you'll just give it a title. This doesn't really matter. This is just for your own reference. And then for this example, we'll click main menu. And because this is a pet store that, you know, technically we're selling accessories, we could start with add menu item. And one of the first items I'll put is the accessories. Someone comes to the website and they want to have a look at the accessories right away. They have a menu option there that they can click. And then for the link, we'll just go to products and then we'll go to all products. At the moment, we only have one product. Or if you have collections or a collection of products that only sells accessories, then you can link them to that collection. And another one I also like to add, our happy customers. So this is where you show off kind of all your reviews of your store. The way you do this is by creating a dedicated reviews page. Now, this is really easy to do with the Luke's page. Now, this is really easy to do with the Luke's app. I don't have it installed at the moment, but I will be installing it later throughout the video and I'll show you guys how to set that all up. At the moment, we'll just choose any page for this. It doesn't really matter and then we'll fix it later on. Another one I like to add is the FAQ. Also another really important page to have. This is essentially answering any objections that your customers might have. Any questions that you think they might have about your store, your product, your shipping times, your refund policy, your money back guarantee, all of these things, you wanna answer all of these questions in your FAQ because again, a lot of customers do check this section. So we haven't created an FAQ page yet. We'll just choose any link here, but I will show you guys how to create one and then we'll actually link it properly in here. One last thing I like to add is the contact us. I like to call it get in touch. It just sounds a little bit more professional. And then for here, we can go to pages and link the contact us page and we'll add that. And that's basically it. It's really easy, really simple. It gives everyone exactly what they're looking for and it just looks clean and professional. Because I've already done it, I'm just gonna discard, but that's how you would do it. Another navigation menu I would add is the policy. So for the footer menu, that's where usually you would add these policies. So the first one I'll create is just, we'll call it policies. We'll add our menu items. For example, the privacy policy that we did. So we'll click privacy policy, and then you can scroll down to policies and link it to the privacy policy that we created earlier. And then we'll just click on add. I'll actually delete this search here. And then we'll do the same thing for all the other policies. All right, so now we have all our policies here. We'll just click on save menu and we'll go back. And then one last menu I usually like to add is just like an about menu so you can have like an about us page and what i like to add here is a get in touch again so this is again the contact us link for people to get in touch and i'll usually add this menu at the bottom of the page near the footer essentially and then i'll add another faq here and again we'll just because we don't have an faq page yet we'll just link it to the contact us page yet but once we do create a, the faq page we can link that in here we'll click on save menu and that's it that's kind of all the menus that you really need and this way your customers can go exactly where they want to and get all the information that they require. So for now, I'm just gonna quickly show you guys how to create a page, link it properly to your menu. We'll just start by going to pages here. And now we'll click on add page and we'll title it FAQ. And then you can save it. And the way you would set up your FAQ is actually extremely easy. So just for an example, you know, one of the questions a lot of people might have is what are your shipping times? So, so you can just come down here and write your first question, like how long does my item take to ship? something like that. You would start this with Q as in the question. You could bold this, underline it and bold it like that. And then right under it, you would just put the answer. So we normally ship all items within three to five business days. And I would not underline this part and that would just be the answer. So just like that. And then you would just repeat this process for all the other questions that you might wanna have on your store. And again, the goal here is to answer everybody's objections, get them to feel comfortable purchasing from your website. And then we'll just click on save. And now we'll go back to our navigation menu for the FAQ. So we'll go to the about menu, we'll click on edit, and then we'll change this. We'll go to pages, cause that's where we just created it and we'll link our FAQ page. So now when someone Someone clicks on the FAQ, it'll bring them to the correct FAQ page that we just created. And now we'll go back and we'll do the same thing for the main menu because there also we had an FAQ page. So we'll just delete that, go to pages and we'll click on FAQ, apply changes and we're done. Perfect. So now it's time to start designing our store starting with the home page. But before we get to that, if you're getting any sort of value out of this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Now, when it comes to designing any sort of e-commerce page, whether it's a product page or a home page, I like 
like to follow the ADA copywriting principles, which stands for A is for attention, I is for interest, D for desire, and A for action. This copywriting model has been proven to convert at the highest level. And what we're essentially doing is we're taking people through a funnel from the top to the bottom, from the attention to the action. We first want to start by getting someone's attention, and then we want to get their interest, and then we want to get their desire to get the product, and then to finally take action. And that's how I like to structure all of my product pages and my home pages. So with that being said, let's jump into my computer and do this together. So once you're in your Shopify store, you're going to want to click on online store, and then we'll click on customize. And like I said, I like to structure the pages from top to bottom following the ADA copywriting principles. What I like to do is actually come in here and I'll usually delete any sections that Shopify's already preloaded. To do that, you'll just click on the section. So for example, the featured collection here, I'll just click on that. I'll scroll down and you'll just click on remove section. I'll keep the announcement bar and I'll keep the header because these are important to have. This is essentially the top part here and then the navigation menu. And I'll also keep the image banner over here as well. So the first thing I always do before even starting the design is I actually go to my color palette that we've chosen earlier and I'll actually copy the code and come back into the Shopify store and I'll set these as the accent colors and the theme settings. This way when I'm designing the store and designing the page, I don't have to always go back and forth by copying the code and I'll show you guys exactly how that's gonna work. You'll just click over here on theme settings on the left hand side. I'm gonna click on colors. I'm gonna scroll down where it says accent one. I'm just gonna click there and then I'm gonna replace it and paste my accent color. Once you do that, you see it's gonna come in here and then I'll go back. I'll get the other accent color. You'll just click here. You'll control C to copy, come back. I'll go to accent two and we'll paste that and there you have it. So now we have both of our accent colors and this is just gonna make changing colors throughout the theme so much easier and I'll show you guys exactly how that's going to happen. So now we're going to come back to the section section and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So I love this announcement here. However, welcome to our store is just very boring and very bland. The first thing I'll do is I'll actually click on it and then click on the welcome to your store. Over here, I like to have some sort of either sale or free shipping or like a BOGO offer, any sort of offer or free shipping that you can put in here that can entice the customer to get them excited to purchase. So what I'll usually do is I'll do something like free shipping on orders over $100. So that's one example. You could also do free shipping on all orders, something like that. So it's really up to you, but I just recommend putting in something here that's enticing to a customer and that'll get them excited to purchase from you. I'll just change this back to free shipping on orders over $100. There we go. And then once I have that in there, I'll actually change the background color to our second accent color. And I love adding color just because it gives the store a personality. It's not bland. It's not boring. It's not your typical all white store. It's just giving the store some sort of personality, which I love. So now that we're done with the announcement bar, we're going to come down here to the header section and we're going to start working on this section. So I'm just going to click on header to change this logo. This is always going to have your store name. So whatever you chose as your store name at the beginning, that's what it's going to show here. To actually put your logo, you're just going to click on theme settings over here here, you're going to click the first drop down, which is logo, and then you're going to upload your logo. So we've already created the logo. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload it here. So I chose to have the logo actually match the color of the announcement. Again, just keeping it on brand and intact and keeping it nice and simple and clean. What I'll do is I'll actually just make it a little bit bigger by just adjusting the desktop logo width. And there we have it. I think that's a good size. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. So that looks great. Now that we have that, we'll actually go back to sections. And now we're back in the header section to change this menu here. Now this is the menu that I actually want to use. But if you wanted to change this menu, because usually it's the Shopify default menu, which is just catalog, shop and contact, you'll just click down here, change, you'll click on change menu, and then you can select any of the menus that you've previously created in the navigation section. So we'll keep that as is. But before we continue, I'm actually going to want to change the size of the text on the announcement bar and over here in the header. I just think it's a little bit too small. So again, you'll just go to here and the theme settings we will go to typography. And this is for headings. If we start to change this on the font size scale, it's going to change the size of the announcement over here. I like it at 120 to 125. It depends on your personal preference, but I just don't like it being too small. So we'll keep that as that. And then to change the header part, we'll just need to scroll down under body and do the same thing. So we can increase this to about 115 and then that should look a lot better. There we go. That looks a lot better to me, it looks crisp and sharp. You can also play with the fonts and change the fonts around. So for the headings, I'm actually going to change it to one of my favorite headings, which is Poppins. You'll select that, click here, and it should change it over here. So this is a heading and this is the body text. So for the body, we'll click change. I'll usually choose something like an open song for the body. I'll select that, click select, and there we have it. Now our text has changed. It's the right size and we're ready to move forward. I always recommend clicking save every time you do quite a bit of changes, just in case your laptop dies or something goes bad, you have your work saved because this can take a lot of time to design. Now that we're done with the header, we'll actually go back to the sections here. We'll click back and now we can start working over here in the image.
image banner. And this is where the first part of the eight of copywriting principles come into play. This is where attention comes into play. And this is where we want to bring in some sort of attention and catch somebody's attention. How we do that is by choosing a strong image to put here and also a strong heading. So strong text to get people enticed and get them excited to purchase from us. Actually, the free shipping on orders over $100 here, that actually is also part of the attention and get them excited to continue scrolling and browsing on your website. So I'm actually going to change this real quick, though I made a mistake here. I'm just going to change it to free shipping on orders over 100. It just had order. And now we'll come back into the banner. We can select an image here. If you click on select image, you can actually go to free images and Shopify will actually give you a bunch of images that you can use for free, which is great. If you're not sure where to get images from, or if you don't have access to a stock library, then this is a great option for you. So you could write something like dog since we're selling in the pet niche and the dog niche specifically. And then you can come down and just try to find something that would look good, that would be on brand and that looks authentic. So just scroll through and you can kind of pick any picture that you like that you think is a great fit for your store. I'll go ahead and select this one over here. I think it looks good. I'll click select and you don't want to overthink this part, guys. We just want to make sure it's clean and on brand. So now that we have our image, it's time to write a strong heading. So we'll just click on the heading here and then you can actually change the text over here. So this is where you want to come up with something a little bit creative, a little bit fun, a little bit different, something to get people excited and to get people wanting to click and continue shopping on your website. So we can write something like from ears to tails to tails, we've got your puppy covered something like that. So that's different. That looks clean. It's fun. It's playful. And then I'll change the heading size to medium. And to me, that looks good. So then we'll go back and we'll actually go to the subheading. So in the subheading, you want to just elaborate a little bit more, give people a little bit more information. We can write something like premium pet accessories, all the fun and no hassles. So we'll keep the text style as body. And the last thing to do will be to just play around with this button just to make it fit our brand a little bit more. So I'll usually change this from shop all to shop the accessories because if we're saying this is an accessory store for pets, this fits a little bit better. And then I'll just add like a little arrow. You can do that by clicking on Alt and then two six all at the same time. And that should bring up a nice little arrow here. And then once you're done with that, you can actually choose where to link this button to. So essentially when someone clicks on this button, where it's going to take them. So for now, I'm gonna have it as all products. But if you do have a collection of only accessories, you would want to link them just to that section of your website. And now we can start working on the interest section of the homepage. So for the interest part, of the homepage, this is where I like to use benefit driven statements. And I like to use things like icons and short text. And I also like to give benefits of the product itself. To do that, we're just going to click on add section over here and then choosing the multi column. But then I like to do a few little edits here. I'll just remove this heading here by clicking on multi column. And I'll just remove that from here. And then this background gray color here, I'll actually remove that as well. So if you come down here to secondary background, we can select none and that'll get rid of that. And then another thing I like to do is I'll actually change the background scheme from background one to accent two to match our website. And now that looks a lot better. Now here's where you want to write a few benefit driven statements about your website. So it could be like free shipping, 24 seven customer support, money back guarantee where it's made, anything that's special to your website, things that you offer. This is where you would want to put these. We can do 24 seven chat support as one. Another one could be money back guarantee. And then the last one could be proudly American owned, something along those lines, whatever it is that it applies to your website, that's what you can and put here. And then what you'll want to do is just elaborate a little bit more in the description section. We can write something like we are proud to offer 24 seven phone and chat support. So you'll just apply this to your website. So if you offer phone support, great. If you don't, then you just put chat support, whatever it is that applies to your website. That's what you want to do. You just want to make sure you're not lying here just in case someone does try to contact you at a random time during the day. You want to make sure this is accurate. And then for the money back guarantee, you can just write love it or your money back. No questions asked. You want to keep these short and sweet really that's the goal here and then for proudly american owned you can write something like all of our products are designed in florida something like that but again you'll just want to make sure that these actually apply to your store and that you're not really lying here too much and now that we have that i actually like to add icons as well icons are great visuals and they catch people's attention so to do that you'll click on column and then you can actually upload an image here for the 24 7 chat support we'll need to come up with an icon so what i like to do is i'll actually go to canva and this is where i'll design an icon so i'll go on create design i'll do a custom size a thousand by a thousand and then we'll create new design and then what you can do is actually go to elements and then we can write 
try something like support and see what kind of icons come up for that. So then we can click on see all and then we can choose any of these that will look good. Maybe we'll do something like this, like a handshake and then we'll just make it a little bit bigger. And then we just want to make sure that the colors are actually going to match. So what I'll do for this is I'll actually make sure that it's a contrasting color to this. So it could be our other second accent color, basically. So I'll come over here. I'll copy this color code. I'll go back to Canva. You'll click on the color icon here. Just paste the color code and then it'll come up. And just like that, we have it in a different color. And then I'll usually just go to share and then make sure you do it as a transparent background and then click download. Once it's downloaded, then you'll just come back to Shopify, click on the column, go to select image, upload the image that we just got from Canva. And then we might have to do a little bit of tweaking just because it might come in a little bit big. But we can fix that by actually going back to the multi column. And then under image width, we can choose one third width of column. And that looks good. And then to make it center, we'll just come down to column alignment and click on center. There we go. So now that I've showed you guys how to do one, I'm going to quickly do the other two and come right back. All right, now this section is done. I think it looks great. It looks clean. The last thing is going to be to just remove this button label. And the way to do that is to, again, just come into the multi-column, scroll down, and all you want to do is come down to button label and just erase that button label out of there. And then again, we'll click on save. So now that we're done with this section, I like to add a little bit more to the interest section of the ADA copywriting principle models. And how you do that is by listing out more benefits. And because we're going to be selling this product on our store, this is the product I've chosen to design the store around. We're going to be trying to come up with benefits and list those benefits on the homepage for this product. How I do that is I like this section called the multi row section. And the reason why I like it is because it allows you to add photos and then short text right beside to further elaborate on the photo and provide the benefit to the customer. So I'm going to quickly fill this out and get back to you guys with what I find. Alrighty, so now we're back and we're done. I've added a few benefits here. So the first one I added was um, a gift of love. I found this photo on the competitor's website and I just added it here. I thought it looked nice as a photo for a gift so i wrote a gift of love and right under it who wouldn't love the most comfortable dot com out there again just driving the benefit home of the product and then here i saw that it's also included with tweezers so one of the benefits is that cleaning will be a breeze the included tweezers make it easy and quick for you to clean and then the last one is that it's safe for your pet this is a really important one people want to make sure that any product they use on their pet is going to be safe i wrote safe for your pet and then right below it our clever design ensures the blades never touch your pet's skin ensuring they stay as cozy as possible possible at all times. And then you just want to make sure that you also add the call to action buttons over here. So I'm just going to quickly fix these up. Alrighty. So now the buttons are done. They look solid. They have our accent color on them. I'm just going to click save here. And now the last part is really just adding the desire and the action. And the way you do that is by adding either testimonials or reviews. If you wanted to add reviews, you can use an app like Luke's and you can integrate the reviews page actually right onto the homepage. We don't have the Luke's app installed right now. And because there's no reviews on the store, it's going to be hard to do that but what we can do is we can add testimonials and i'll show you guys exactly how to do that so you'll just want to come down here and click on add section and the section we're going to want to choose is the image with text so once this loads up we're just going to add like a review image over here and then we're going to add the title of the review or the testimonial and then write out the testimonial over here so i'm just going to quickly do that and come right back all right so now we have the testimonial in here and our page is really starting to come together the last section is just the footer section let's quickly go through that for the footer i also like to make sure that i have have some sort of color on it so i'll change this to the accent too to match our announcement bar this just keeps the website nice and cohesive with all of the colors and now for the navigation i like to keep it kind of as is the only thing i'll change is actually just the headings here so i'll change the quick links to policies because this has our policies and you always want to make sure you include your policies in the footer of your home page and then the next one i'll actually add as well instead of info i'll do like a contact and we can change this and then click on change menu and use our our about menu that we actually created earlier so this will have our get in touch and any faqs that we might have on the site and then you can decide to keep the our mission and you know just fill it out with anything that you like or you can also choose to get rid of it and just have either the two menus or you can also add a third menu if you wish with any other further information that you might want to add all right so we're all done with the footer and we're essentially all done with the home page so to quickly preview how this is going to look i'm just going to click these three buttons click on view and it's going to show us exactly how it's going to look like live on our website I think it looks great. Not not too shabby, honestly, for getting this done pretty quickly. It's come together really nicely. Alrighty, so now that our homepage is completed, it's time to officially add our first product to our store. But before we do, we need to think about how we're going to be fulfilling this product to begin with. As a beginner, you essentially have three options in how you're going to fulfill your product. You can either use an app like 
auto DSers, which is essentially just using AliExpress. You can also use other apps like Zendrop and CJ Dropshipping. Those apps provide a little bit better pricing and a little bit faster shipping times. Or another option would be using a private agent. So I'd like to break down all of these options for you. Auto DSers is essentially an app that connects to your store and creates an order on AliExpress for all of your orders on your Shopify store. However, once the orders are placed on AliExpress, you still have to go on AliExpress and manually submit the payment. So it's not completely automated. Using auto DSers will give you the least amount of profit and also the slowest shipping time. Now, on the other hand, CJ Dropshipping also integrates directly with your store and they'll automatically fulfill all of your orders for you. With CJ Dropshipping, you'll usually have a lower product cost and a faster shipping time. Now, the last option is using a private agent and a private agent will source your product for you and fulfill all of your orders for you within six to 10 business days. Using a product agent will usually give you the lowest product cost possible and the fastest shipping time possible as well. Now, as a beginner, I'd highly recommend either starting with auto DSers or CJ Dropshipping. And the reason why is because you first want to validate your product. Once your product is validated and selling consistently 10 plus units a day, then you would want to switch over to a private agent. And the reason why is because private agents usually only like working with dropshippers or at least doing 10 plus orders per day. So now that we got that out of the way, it's time to officially add our first product to our store. So like I said, as a beginner, you're either going to want to start with auto DSers or CJ dropshipping. And the first thing you're going to want to do is actually download these apps to your Shopify store. So I actually already have both of these apps downloaded, but if you don't have them downloaded, then you'll just click on app and sales channel settings and you'll just download them to your store. Now, I prefer starting with CJ dropshipping just because they do have a faster shipping time and they automatically fulfill your orders for you from beginning to end. So once you're on the CJ dropshipping homepage, you're actually just going to want to search for your product. And our product is the electric pet comb groomer. And then it's essentially going to give you a whole bunch of products and you're just going to look for your product. Here I am looking for a product and sometimes you actually won't find your product here directly. So if that happens, you can always post a sourcing request to CJ Dropshipping to have them add the product to their catalog. And in the meantime, you could use auto DSers. So just by having a quick look here, I actually don't think that CJ Dropshipping has our product. Just to remember, this is a product here that we're looking for to add to our store. Like I said, from the quick look that I'm having here, I don't actually see this product on CJ Dropshipping dropshipping. So if that happens, all you'll want to do is actually just come up here and click on sourcing. And then you want to click on post sourcing request. And then once you're in here, you're just going to click on individual product. And then you're just going to fill out all this information over here. And then C2 dropshipping will get back to you within 24 to 48 hours and let you know that they've added your product to their catalog. So now since we can't use CJ dropshipping, we're actually going to have to use auto DSers to add the product to our store. So once you're on the auto DSers app, you're just going to want to click on import list. And then we're going to click on import or search over here. And then we're going to insert the AliExpress link here. So what I'm going to do is actually go to AliExpress and get the product link from over there. So once you're on AliExpress, you're just going to want to search for your product again. So we're just going to put here electric pet hair comb, and then you're going to want to find your product. So this is our product right here. And I'll usually just have another quick look throughout the whole page just to see if there's any other cheaper options. So this one's 545. So this one looks good and it has 65 sold with a 4.8 star rating. So that's pretty good for me. So you'll just click on that and then copy the link, come back to the auto DSers app, put the link over here and click on search. Once you click on search, it should load the product right over here. And then you're just going to click this checkbox and then click on push to Shopify. And then we're just going to make sure that our store is actually selected. And then we're going to click on also publish to online store. I would keep this unchecked because you don't want to keep selling the product if there's no stock. And then you just click on push to Shopify. So now you can see it says successfully pushed one product. So then we'll just go back to our store and confirm that it's actually here. Perfect. Now that the product has been pushed, this is where we can start with editing a few different things. So the first thing we'll do is actually shorten the title because it's just way too long. So I'll just change this to electric grooming comb. And then I'll actually come down in the description and delete everything that's in here. And then the photos, you'll just want to make sure the photos look good and clean. And if you have any other additional photos, then this is a good time to upload them. So I'm just going to upload a few more photos that I have over here. Now, once your photos are completed, you're just going to scroll down here just to make sure the variants are correct. And I see here that they have a variant called one piece, two pieces, three pieces. And essentially it's just multiplying the price by two and by three. So I'll actually delete the two pieces and the three pieces because there's no need for those. If the customer wants to buy more than one, they'll just adjust their quantity in the cart or on the product page. So we'll just come in here and we'll click on delete and delete and then done. And actually there's no need to even have the quantity here. So I'll just actually delete this entire uh, variant. So we'll just click on delete here and we're all done. So now we just have the color, which is gray because that's the only color available from that supplier. And then once you're done all that, you'll just click on save. So now that that's saved, it's time to officially actually design the product page. So what I like to do here is actually go to online store and then we'll click on customize and up in the search bar over here we'll actually go to products and then we'll go to default product and now this is where you can actually start designing the product page and how the product page is going to look 
So like I mentioned during the homepage section of this tutorial, I like to follow a copywriting principle called the ADA copywriting model. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna start with the attention, the interest, the desire, and the action. And that's how you wanna structure your product pages because that's been proven to convert at the highest level possible. For the attention section, we're actually gonna change this main image here. For the main image, you actually really want an authentic lifestyle product image. So I'd actually rather choose one of these images. It's just gonna look a lot better than the main image over here. So the way to do that is you're just gonna go back to your product and from over here this is where you can select a different image now you actually won't just change it over here you'll actually have to come down and change it in the variant section and over here where it says gray you'll just click on the photo over here and this is where you can actually change the product image so i'll actually just choose this one for now i think it's the best one we have considering our limited options but what you would do is try to scour the internet and find the best hero image or the best main product image you can for this type of product and then you just click on done and then you click on save and then that should reflect on the product page over here if we just click on refresh all right so this looks a lot better to me and we're just going to start by cleaning up this right side over here so the first thing i'm going to do is actually remove this hassan's testing store over here and the way you'll do that is you'll just come to the left side here you click on the text and you click on remove block the next thing we'll want to do is I just noticed that the price here is obviously wrong. So we'll just go back over here and we'll change the price. I'm just going to put $49.95 for now. And then you click on save and that again should update right over here on the product page. Alrighty, so now the price looks a lot better. We'll leave the color as is, the quantity button as is. Everything else so far looks pretty good. So we'll just scroll down over here and start building out the rest of the product page. I'll actually remove this share button as well. So we'll just go to share and we'll click on remove block. And then I'd like to reorganize these images a little bit better. So I think if we just click on the image, Images, we can actually do that over here on the left hand side so what you'll do is actually just come over here to desktop layout and we can just choose thumbnails instead and see how that looks that looks a lot better but there's just way too many thumbnails so i think we can do a thumbnail carousel which will have it rotate there we go i think that's a lot cleaner and, and then customers can just click on the arrows to see the rest of the photo so once we have that done we'll actually just click on save now that we have the attention section completed now we can start working on the interest section and what i like to do again here is add short text with icons similar to what we did on the home page so i'm just going to do it again over here with things that relate directly to the product and the benefits of buying the product or the benefits of buying directly from our website now we're done with the section and again this is just where you add a little bit of icons and some short text to quickly get a few key benefits across the way so the first thing would be free shipping try it at home with our 30-day money-back guarantee and then proudly American owned obviously you would adjust these to whatever your store is offering and whatever benefit you can offer to the customer and then one thing I actually forgot to add is just a little bit of extra information just on this section over here so what I'm actually gonna do is just scroll up under product information I'm gonna click on add block and then we're going to choose collapsible row and this is where you can add specific key information information for the customer that they'll immediately want to know. So this can be things like shipping, quality, product material, any quick FAQ that you can kind of throw in here, this would be the spot to do it. So for example, the first thing I'll actually write here is learn more about our comb. And then I'll actually just remove the check mark and just leave it as is without anything. And then to write in the drop down, you would just write over here in the row content. So we have the most amazing pet comb on the market. Obviously you wouldn't write this, you would write something a lot more detailed and you would just write in a few key features and benefits under this section over here and then what i'll do is actually add another one by going to add block and you can do collapsible row again and then we'll talk about shipping because shipping is something that every customer wants to know they really want to know when they're going to get their product and how long it's going to take so i'll just write shipping over here and then again under the row content is where you would quickly give them an overview on how long it's going to take for them to get their product and now for the icons we can actually just choose box for the shipping and for the learn more about our comb we can actually put a question mark there we go so now that looks nice and clean and organized and then we'll just click on save so now that we have this saved it's time to add more key benefits to this specific product so the way we do that is we'll actually just go back and we'll come down over here we'll click add a section and we'll choose the multi-row section so again this is very similar to what we did on the home page so i'm just going to quickly fill this out Alrighty, so i added three benefits over here again describing the benefits of the product features tell but benefits sell what you want to do here is add benefits explain to the customer how you're going to make their life easier or their pet's life easier so one of the first benefits i put here is untangle your pet's fur with our fur tastic tool this is what helps you connect with your customer and then right beneath i just wrote say goodbye to painful grooming sessions and then the next one i just talk about safety because again safety is a big benefit you want to make sure that you tell the customer that this product is going to be safe on their pet and then easy to clean again letting them know that cleaning is a breeze which is a benefit to them so now that we're done with this section of the benefits the next thing i like to add is a money bag guarantee and the way to do that is we'll just go back to rows and we'll click on add section and then we'll choose the image with text 
And now once we have this loaded up, I'm just gonna quickly change the heading to 30 day money back guarantee. And the reason why we do this is because we wanna give the customer the least amount of resistance to purchase from us. So if we offer a 30 day money back guarantee, essentially telling them, hey, look, you can try out this product for 30 days. If you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Now you're removing all the resistance that the customer may have had on purchasing your product by offering this guarantee. So we'll just add this in here. And then right below, we'll essentially just tell them either you like it or your money back. So we can write something like use it at home for 30 days. Don't like it. Simply return it within 30 days for a full refund. Don't worry. We cover return shipping as well. Again, this is how you remove the objection from the customer completely. Like if I saw this on a website, like, hey, try for 30 days. If you don't like it, return it. And we'll cover the return shipping. You're essentially removing all risk for the customer and it's gonna make them extremely comfortable to buy from you. And then we'll just add an image here. So I'll just go to Canva and get this done really quick. Alrighty, so now we're done with the money back guarantee section. And as you can see, it's starting to look a lot cleaner and a lot more organized and consistent than our competitor over here. As you can see, their product page is filled with a ton of stuff. It's very unorganized. It's very messy. And if you look at ours that we just designed in about 10 minutes, it's a lot cleaner, a lot more to the point and benefit driven. So the next section after the money back guarantee section will be to add the reviews. All right, so now it's time to add reviews to our store and reviews are a crucial part of our product page and a crucial element of the AIDA copywriting principles. Reviews help your customers see that other customers have purchased from your website and that they A, like the product, B, they actually received the product and C, they're enjoying using the product. This type of social proof will help your store convert at a much better rate than if you did not have any reviews on your store. So let's jump on my computer and start adding some reviews. Alrighty, so to add some reviews to our store, we're actually gonna have to install a reviews app. So we'll just go to the apps and then we'll go to the Shopify app store. Now, as a beginner, I'd like to save you guys some money and I highly recommend using TT Ali Reviews. It's a free reviews app and you can also import your reviews from AliExpress. So let's go ahead and get that downloaded. So now that we have the app installed, I'm going to take you guys step by step on exactly how to use this app to maximize your sales and to maximize your social proof. So the first thing we're actually going to do is come down here to reviews widgets. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the star color to actually match our brand color. So I'm just going to click on the star color and change it to our brand color. Now, once you have your brand color as the star color, you can actually come down here and actually start changing a few of the settings as well. So a few cool settings that you can have or that you can change is the review date. So you can choose to hide the date or to have it show in different formats. I'll keep it as hidden for now. You can change the way that the name actually shows. You can change the country flag if you want it to hide or to show. You can choose to have the verified badge, etc, etc. These are all settings that you can play with depending on your store. They're not really that important. I would actually leave these just as is. So the next thing we're going to do is import reviews. And to do that, we're just going to click on the import reviews button over here. You're going to come to a page that looks like this it's going to show you all of your products that you have on your store and since this is the only product we have this is what it's showing us over here and now what we want to do is actually click on this button over here which is going to allow us to import reviews directly from aliexpress so these are reviews that other customers have left on this product and all we're going to do is import those reviews and bring them into our own store so to do that we're actually just going to click on this button import from aliexpress and then all you're going to do is copy the link from aliexpress come back to your store and just paste that link right over here and now you can choose the content options that you want. So you can have them show all reviews, photo reviews only, text reviews only, and text and photo reviews. Now I'll choose the text and photo reviews. And the reason why you don't want to do all reviews is because usually some customers only leave a star rating without any words or without any content to the review, without a photo, without anything. And in my opinion, those reviews are not really valuable because they provide no context to the consumer. So I would just leave it as text and photo reviews. Now for review quantity, this is just how much reviews you want the app to import. So I think the setting is at 30. So we'll just leave it at 30. 30 for now, but you can increase it or decrease it as you wish. And then you can actually choose to import reviews just from specific countries if you wanted to. For example, only the English speaking countries, which is what I recommend. But for now, we'll just keep it as all. And then I would highly recommend keeping this unchecked just so that you can actually verify the reviews and read the reviews for yourself before you actually have them published to your store. So once we have that all set, we'll just click on import reviews. And now according to the settings that I set, I was able to import three successful reviews. And the reason why it was so little is just because on the AliExpress listing, this product only had eight reviews where three of them matched the criteria that I had set for the app to import the reviews. So now to actually see these reviews, you're just going to click on the reviews tab over here. And now we can see the three reviews that were actually imported to our store. So now if we wanted to publish these reviews, all we would have to do is just toggle this button to on. But before we do that, I highly recommend just coming in here and looking at the reviews and making sure they make sense and that they're in the language that your store is selling in. So now all of these reviews are not in English. So I would highly recommend either just deleting them or you can click on the pencil icon over here and 
and just edit the reviews and you could actually write whatever you want. But for now, I'll just leave them as is and publish them to our store. So now that the reviews are published to our store, our next step is to set up the review request settings. So we're just gonna click on the review request settings over here and then we're gonna click on email settings. And this is essentially the settings that allow you to send emails to your customers asking them for reviews. So over here, as you can see, the standard setting is that it'll send a email review request after the order has been fulfilled by 14 days. And then you can scroll down over here and I would actually just change the sender name to our brand name. Our brand name is Puppy House, so that's what I'll input over here. And once that's done, you can actually also add your logo. So now that we have our logo uploaded, this looks a lot better. And then we can scroll down and actually check out the content that will be sent to our customer. So the subject is just gonna say, please review your latest purchase. So I would not really change this. And then the header can stay as how is your experience. And then down in the description, this is where you can kind of play around with it according to your brand, but I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. And then once that's done, you can actually just click on save. So those were the settings for the first email. Now it'll actually send a second email as well if you decide to turn this on. I think it's automatically off. But if you wanted to send a second email like a reminder email asking people to leave a review then you would just turn this on and kind of fill it out the exact same way we just did for the first email. And now the last tab is actually the discount tab. So the discount tab is for you to be able to offer discounts to your customers to leave you reviews with photos. Photo reviews are actually very powerful because it just allows customers to see the product in action and to actually see the product in another customer's hands. So I would highly recommend and encourage you guys to have this setting toggled on. And then you can just scroll down and choose how big of a discount you want to give people for leaving a photo review. I would actually just leave it at 15%. That usually works really well. And now to see what this will look like, you can actually just click on view sample and it'll show you that once they click on write a review, it's gonna show them a pop-up that says leave a photo review and you'll get 15% off your next purchase. And now that's essentially it for adding product reviews to your product page and to your website. Now all we'd have to do is just check our product page just to make sure that the reviews are actually there. Now I'm on the product page and I can confirm that we have all three reviews showing here and the stars will always show right under the product title and then if we scroll down we'll see the reviews widget over here with all of our customer reviews. And now if you don't see your widget at the bottom of the page you actually might see it right over here when you actually install the app and to fix that all you have to do is come back into the editor and then once you're in here you'll just click on add section and then you'll scroll all the way down and choose the apps and then you'll choose the review widget app and then you can actually grab it and and choose where you want to place your reviews widget. However, I just recommend putting it right below the 30 day money back guarantee. And then once you do that, we'll just click on save. And now there's essentially one last section to add to the page to complete the product page. And that is the frequently asked questions section. And the reason why we wanna add this section is again, because if customers scroll all the way down, they're most likely going to have questions about your product. And the best way to answer those questions is to have a frequently asked questions section right at the bottom of your product page. Now you might be wondering what are the best questions to add in your frequently asked questions section and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to find that out. So before we actually figure out what questions to add to our FAQ, we're actually going to have to design the FAQ section and to do that, we're just going to click on add section and then we're going to choose collapsible content. Once we have that done, I'm actually just going to click on the collapsible content and just change this to FAQ. Now FAQ is a little bit boring, so I actually like to write something else. I usually write something along the lines of ready to order but have questions. Now something like this is just a little bit less boring than the standard FAQ. Now figuring out what type of questions to add to your FAQ section at the beginning might be hard because you might be asking yourself, well, I don't know what kind of questions my customers are going to have for this product. But the best way to find these kind of questions is actually by using Amazon to your advantage. And the way you do that is actually just by going to amazon.com and then you'll find your product. So once you land on your product on Amazon, you're actually just gonna scroll down and then you'll see this section that's called customer questions and answers. So this is real customers from Amazon that have actually asked these questions. And the most popular ones are usually gonna be shown right here at the top because they'll usually have a bunch of more upvotes than the other ones. So you can actually use this to your advantage and add these questions to your store as these are real customers that have actually asked these questions. So one of the questions is, does the stainless blade model work any better than the blade that normally comes with the comb. So this is where you'll actually have to do some research on your product and figure out the answer to these questions. But this is a great place to figure out your FAQ section and because again, this is real customers asking these questions. And if these customers had these questions, then your customers are most likely gonna have these questions as well. So I'm just gonna copy a few of these questions and add them into our store. So now that we added the questions, all I'm gonna do is actually just change the check mark icon to a question mark icon. 
All right, so now that looks much better. So now the next step would be to just quickly go over the questions just to make sure they actually apply to your store and to your product, which they most likely will just because we found a very similar or the same product on Amazon. Alrighty, so we already went over the first question. So the second question is, I have a very large golden doodle with mats. Do you think it will work on him rather painlessly? So I would actually rephrase this to make it more general to fit more customers. Not every customer actually has a golden doodle, but a lot of customers might have a large dog with mats. So I'm actually just going to quickly rephrase this to fit more customers. So I just changed the question to I have a very large dog with mats. Will this work on them rather painlessly? So again, this is just to make the question fit more people because like I said, not everybody will have a specific type of dog, but a lot of people might have a large dog. So this is a better way to actually structure the question. So now the third question is actually very similar to the second question where this customer was asking a specific question about their specific dog. So again, I would just rephrase this to make it more general and broad to most dog owners. But since this is just an example, we'll just leave it as is and then we'll click on save. So now that we're done with the FAQ, the last thing to add would be our final call to action button. We need to make sure that if people scroll all the way to the bottom that we actually don't leave them hanging and add a solid call to action button here to make it easy for them to add the product to their cart or to purchase the product directly. So to do that, we're actually just going to click on add a section and then we're going to choose the rich text option. So now for the heading, again, we're going to want to make sure we add a benefit driven statement here. So something we could write is ready to give your dog more comfortable grooming sessions. Sessions. And then I would actually remove the subheader over here. And then for the button label, I would just change this to make it mine. And then for the link, you're just going to want to make sure that you select the product that you're currently working on. Once that's done, you're just going to click on save. And now our product page is officially completed. And now to preview our product page, we're actually just going to come back into our store and click on products. And then if you just hover over your product, you'll just click on this little eye icon. So now this is our final product page. And as you guys can see, creating a well-branded, clean website doesn't actually take too much time. It's actually very easy. And once you get familiarized with the Shopify dashboard and the Shopify settings, you can actually get a page done like this in under an hour. And now, like I said before, one thing that could be improved is the photos. I would actually look for more authentic, high quality photos. But for now, this will do. This was just a quick tutorial to show you guys exactly how to create a clean looking branded store. Creating nice branded looking product pages doesn't actually take too much time. Just take the time to practice daily and use other websites to get inspired. Now that our store is completed, it's officially time to start running ads for our product. If you'd like me to make an in-depth video on how to start running ads on Facebook and on TikTok as a beginner, then please let me know by commenting below the word ads. I sincerely hope you guys enjoyed my first video and got some sort of value out of it. And if you did, please consider subscribing and leaving a like and I'll see you guys in the next video video.